Hi there, this is Care Hart, and I have a secret guest with me crafting today. Decided to just take a little time this morning and play. And so over to my right here is Clint Hedges. And hello. He's going to be shabby sheeping up a skirt, one of the ones that goes underneath a shirt. And I've got my little cluster box which um, I'll share with you guys and I'll be making some clusters. And so we're gonna hang out with you guys for about an hour and hopefully have some fun. And so tell me what you've got on your desk there, Clint. Hi there, Arlene. Hi, Arlene. If anybody's questions for me, I can chat. So if they got questions for me, can you let um, me know? Say that again, it did I, uh, I got I can't read chat, so if anybody's got questions for me, can you let me know? Yep, I'll do that. So far, Alrighty. our is fine, y'all. <laughs> when I got here, it's a bunch of stuff that I cut it out last night from my um, stash that I had. And all this stuff is going to go on this little gown that my mom, my grandmother sewed. She was going to make a doll out of it, but she decided not to. So I went ahead and when she passed away, I took it and decided to play with it last night. And I found a bunch of stuff to go on it. Well, that sounds like fun. And that is a big, huge, fun pile, too. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> that go right there. So my little, my, when I do clusters, I do it actually with a purpose. Sometimes what happens is when I'm, when I'm making things, I think too much about the layout of things. And so clusters help me decide to just lay things out without overthinking everything. And so that's what I like to do. And so um, I have my stuff sorted. And the way that I lay things out, so these are like the big things, usually the first couple of things. I have a little pile of stamps. These two piles are small things with no words. These three piles are all words, just in three different sizes. And then this is the tiny words, so like four piles of words. And then these two, are, I mean, this one right here is just smaller bits that, that layer up. And so... I brought this out today because I was just making cards and my leftovers from making the cards go into my cluster box. And I like having them sorted as, oh, and this is my teeny tinies, which sometimes make their way onto tiny clusters. And all I need is hmm. a stapler. Sometimes my base is too big for the few items I choose to go on the cluster. So... I'll cut stuff, but I try to do it where it's all just one staple. So what have you been up to lately, Clint? Oh, I've just been crafting and getting rid of stuff that I didn't want no more. And, um, and plus my um, aunt just passed away <laughs> recently with cancer and I've been trying to deal with that. And plus I've been going through more stuff that I had and I got a bunch of like summary stuff that I've been going through and sorting out and then put them in this pile and that pile and just put them all in bags and yeah. Well, I actually think it's kind of fun sorting sometimes. I know. Don't, don't you just love it? <laughs> I do. I do. And, you know, it's it's uh, it's when I don't want to think about things and I want to do something simple, I end up sorting stuff. In fact, some of my favorite little bins like this are from when I just didn't want to think and I wanted to sort. Yeah. I have my big scissors today, so cutting the tiny intricate stuff is not going to be happening. <laughs> <laughs> well, y'all should know this, but Care and Jean already know because they started laughing when I when I told them this. I was at Walmart Sunday with my dad. 
we were in in the in the laundry detergent area to for clothes. Well, he needed uh, laundry shampoo, laundry detergent for um, his clothes to smell good. And he opens up a cap out on this big bottle, right? So he opens up the cap, see? And um, he sniffs it. I'm like, oh my gosh, here we go. Here we go. I could just see it. And it's uh, sniffing it. He snorted some of it up his nose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too funny, Clint. That is definitely too funny. <laughs> I was rolling. I was like, I couldn't stop laughing. I was sitting on the couch the other day. I just like... I'll pull it together and all goes, what are you laughing about? I was like, that thing that my dad did with his nose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I just started dying. I was dying in Walmart. I couldn't stop laughing. The woman in front of me goes, what did he do? I was like, <laughs> he snorted some shampoo up his nose. She goes, oh, my Lord. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it was too funny. I told Gina about it. I FaceTimed her, and she started laughing. And she goes, when did he do that? And I was like, on Sunday, we were going to Walmart, and he decided to snort some of it up his nose instead of sniffing it. He goes, he, he must be like us. He likes to sniff things, like craft stuff. I'm like, I don't think he does, but I do. <laughs> All right, I gotta see if this will fit on here. He's a little bit bigger. Uh oh. What happened to care? Oh boy. Did she get disconnected? Uh oh, what just happened? She'll be back, I guess. I don't know. She must be rebooting, so. I see her now. Um, I had to change to a different device because my uh, computer froze. So Uh-oh. I have to turn my computer off and reboot. So you've got the show, Clint, but I'm still hearing words. <laughs> okay. That's crazy stuff. It just froze and everything was spinning. And I was like, oh, no, what am I going to do? <laughs> but, I, but I did hear the end of your cute little story. Yeah. That is funny. I like I was like, what happened to Karen? I was like, I hope the computer didn't swallow her. <laughs> well, the computer does swallow me up sometimes, I'm telling you. <laughs> Let's put you behind the butterfly instead. This needs to be flat. There we go. You know, I do need to get myself a longer stapler one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> I have three staplers just like this one. Mine's a purple one. I got like two of, I got a black one and I got my grandma's stapler. And that'll work right there. I just need to put a little dabs of glue on here. I don't even know if y'all can see my stuff really well. 
It was back on the phone like the old days. <laughs> there we go. That'll work. Ugh. Are you enjoying your pile of fun bits? Oh, of course. <laughs> oh, already out of so, trouble. <clears throat> uh oh. <laughs> Don't move. <laughs> You're like me. I talk to my stuff all the time. I'm like, don't you dare fall on me. Don't you do I it. Talk, yep, I talk to my craft supplies all the time. <laughs> oh, I do too. Mom it, was like, clean. <laughs> if I put it on the shelf, I'm like, don't fall. I've got strict orders for you. Don't you dare fall. <laughs> I'm that way too. I'm like, don't you dare fall. I'm going to get carry hard on you. <laughs> <laughs> I love a good pile of clusters. They automatically look fun in a box, you know? Oh, wow. Remember the first time I made them was, I guess now it's years ago. And um, I came across some clusters that were made by a lady named Jessica Rapp. And she is a great artist. I haven't actually, I haven't checked out anybody's channel in a long time. It does make me feel bad. I wish I could spend more time visiting all y'all. You know, but. Yeah. Video bomb. Oh, she video bombed. Are you going to play too? No, I just got up. I haven't even had looks coffee. Like just wanted to say hello and good morning. Well, good morning. Hi, Hi Jean. <laughs> I'll watch you guys while I'm drinking my coffee outside on the rainy porch. Oh, I love coffee on a rainy porch. You know, that sounds really silly, but I will stop. Oh, that would be a day. blessing to go out. <laughs> You know, I wouldn't mind doing taking a shower in the rain. As long as it's not thundering, then I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we actually had a crazy I could just thing. go out. I could just go out and want get my hair all wet, and then I'll say, I took my shower, Mom. I'm done for the day. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy. I'll see you in the box. All right. I'll see you in the box. I can't read the chat till my computer. Comes. Okay. Bye. Get that coffee. I don't know if I want to see Jean without the coffee. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, hubs said, yeah, my hubs said to me this morning, because um, I had made the coffee, but I didn't go get my coffee yet. And he says, I don't know if we want to talk until after you get that coffee. It's been made for about 15 minutes. <laughs> it's like, um, okay, I'll go get that soon. Oh, my gosh. I remember one day I woke up out of bed. <laughs> and um, I was in there. Mama was sitting on the couch. She had this grin on her face like she wanted to kill someone. I'm like, Mom, what is wrong? And she goes, I need my coffee. I was like, ooh. <laughs> I'm like, you're in a bad mood. And she goes, I need my coffee. I need my cigarettes. I'm like, oh, gosh. Should I run or should I hide? And I'm like, I think I better go into my room until you feel better. <laughs> so I stayed in here in the craft room. But <laughs> oh, that's fine. I was like, ooh. <laughs> And then she woke up one the next day and she goes, I am so sorry being a grudge. I just didn't have my coffee and my cigarettes and I need to go get some. I'm like, now I understand why you were so cranky. 
my uh, my daughter was moving away from Florida and back to the state where she was born. And um, she had her car here that we were going to transport on one of those car carriers and ship it to her. And so it was in my driveway. Well, I'm not used to having a car behind the other car in the driveway. And I was taking my truck and pulling it over to the shed, which means I back it up on the driveway and then pull it into the, and yes, we drive on the grass in Florida, but I was, you know, going to back up the truck and then pull it over to the shed so I could load some stuff up into the truck and deliver it. And, um, when, when, uh, I back and I was only awake for like five minutes before I did that, but I just thought that, you know, I gotta, you know, get a start on the day. There's too much to do on the day. Well, I forgot that her car was there and in my Uh own driveway, I backed right into her car. Oh no. Yep. So I called her up and told her what happened and, um, she got a good chuckle out of it. And, uh, and I told her, I said, well, you know, there's a couple of things we can do. We can either make it an insurance thing or, or I can just say the car's paid off. Right. (laughs) So she's like, well, let's just say the car's paid off. (laughs) And so that's what we did. (laughs) And then she got it and she goes, mom, it looks much worse than I thought. (laughs) She's like, I'm sorry, sweetie. Oh, was she mad that you backed into her car? No. Well, you know, she's she's a good spirit. She doesn't really get all um, upset about that. She when I told her I was only awake for like five minutes, she was more surprised that I even moved. You know, so it's like, uh, yeah. So no, she wasn't. She wasn't mad. <laughs> yeah, I was in a car accident one day one time my mom just got a brand new car and it was brand spanking new my grandpa helped her get it and stuff we were getting ready to go show it off to my dad well this idiot decided to come out of nowhere and hit us and the only person that was injured in that car was me oh i was sitting in the I was sitting in the back seat, no matter of a lie. I was sitting in the back seat and my face. I was sitting like in the on the right side where the window is and everything. And I hit my jaw so hard on that. And, and I thought my whole mouth was bleeding. And I ended oh. up in the hospital. And so, and then I banged up my left knee to where I couldn't move it. So they had to put me on crutches and stuff. And they took x-rays. Well, they scared me there for a minute. They said, well, you got um, blood clots in your brain. I was like, oh, my God. I was like, I was freaking out. And they came back and she, they go, false alarm. It was a glitch. I'm like, oh, my God. You guys give me a heart attack. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's part of false alarm. <laughs> Yeah, and then I couldn't breathe out of that cast that I put on my throat because it was so tight around my neck that I couldn't breathe out of it. And the doctor came in and goes, how do you feel on that thing? I'm like, uncomfortable, and this thing is too tight around my neck, and I couldn't breathe out of it. So the way I was able to breathe was to pull it down a little bit with my finger and then breathe a little bit and then pull it back up. I'm like, this thing is too uncomfortable. I cannot lay in this big old plastic thing that they put me in. So they yeah. put me in the bed and I fell asleep. But everybody else was okay. And then my. Well, I'm glad everybody else was okay. And it sounds like you fully recovered. So that that's still scary. You know? Yeah, it was. My bless my grandfather. He was crying, and I said, "Grandpa, don't cry. I'm all right. I'm just a little sore, but I'll be all right." Because I'm just glad you're okay. And I was like, "Yep, I'm okay. <laughs> I'm tough." <laughs> One time, I was I was uh, probably I want to say sixteen, seventeen years old, and um, I was. I was, I might've been 18, but I don't think so. Not in that car. So, um, I had, I I was driving past a mall area 
and I was living in Florida at the time. And the, the mall area had a horrible part where it merged and then there's an entryway right where it merges. So sometimes goofy people who don't realize you can just go further ahead, make a right and make another right. They want to get there faster. So they cut in front of cars and try to get into that entryway, which is now fixed, you know, 500,000 years later, but it's, it's fixed. And, um, Oops. My, my, uh, my, what I said at the time as I was crossing there is I was talking, I don't even know who I was talking to in the car. Um, I was talking to someone in the car and I said, you know, this is why accidents happen because the person um, right in front of me came to a complete stop all at once because another car had pulled in front of them and I didn't even get the word happen out of my mouth. And a, uh, <laughs> and the person had rear-ended me. And so I'm in the middle Ooh. of saying the sentence, this is why accidents happen. Bam. That <laughs> got rear-ended. Uh. Yeah, people around here are crazy. I mean, they fly out here. I mean, I'm telling you, there was a little girl that lived down the street from me. And this little lady was driving and this little girl got, got ran over and her shoe just flew off of her foot. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it was terrible. And then um and then there was a, a car coming by our house and come to find out it was a drunk driver and he was so drunk that he ran into he ran into a tree next across the street from our house. I'm like, ooh. That's crazy. There was a lot of things that went on around my area, and I, I just stay in. You know, I do my own thing in here. I craft and talk to you, talk to Gene, talk to everybody on Messenger, and and see who's bored and who isn't. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, there you are. <laughs> I'm back. I can read the chat now, and I'm back on my main screen. So that is cool. <laughs> Sweet. So I've got a couple of questions for you. Okay. How did Defy start with you and Jean Peter together? Um. Well, you mean the how did Defy start all together or when Jean Peter became a volunteer? When it all started. Okay. So back in 2018, um, well, actually, technically in 2017, um, I had one of the worst months in my life with migraine pain. It was intense. And... Um, what I did the entire time, pretty much the entire time, was craft and make stuff and mostly cards because that's kind of like my happy place is making cards. And um, when, when it came to the end of December 2017, I said, there's got to be a science behind this. It can't just be that, you know, I'm the only one making cards to get through massive pain because I live with a migraine that never ends. And so, mm. um, so then I, I looked up and found that there was actually some research that proved that, you know, creating art actually improves the overall well-being in folks. And for me personally, it helps me you know, not think about the pain and get through whatever it is physically I'm dealing with. Right. And so um, when I found out there was real research, I looked to see if there were any other nonprofits that were providing art supplies to people who couldn't afford it. Cause I've had some times in my life where I couldn't afford to buy art supplies. And I was thinking to myself, well, you know, I can now, but at those times I couldn't. And so I just was thinking that for other people who have physical ailments, wouldn't it be amazing if, you know, there was an organization that would help them get the supplies because they probably don't even know how amazing crafting is for creating because they can't afford the supplies. 
So I found out what it takes to make a nonprofit and then then decided that's a little creepy and then decided to start it up um it took a while to do all the paperwork because it's actually not all that easy um it took a while to do the paperwork to become a nonprofit, and then um for that first year i was spending all the time even trying to figure out well what is it that i'm going to do to go help people um, I did have some artists in the first year where I was just giving them the free art supplies. I decided to make it national right away um, across the country because with my own migraine, I just can't always have good days. And so whatever it is I do, I have to be able to unplug. And so that's why it's immediately national versus just local. And so... Um, Dagna, but that didn't work very well. Hold on. There we go. Um, Jean was, so when I first started, I already had a YouTube channel, but it was only a couple of months old. And I thought, well, um, anyone who comes onto the channel that's looking at crafting, lots of artists you know, we may come across them over time. And I'm afraid of grow at the time. I was really afraid of growing too fast because I was funding all of it myself um, in that first bit. And then um, by the time I get to months later, other people were donating stuff and helping. And uh, Jean's donation went to, I mean, before all of YouTube seemed to be doing auctions. We did an auction in 2018 in August of 2018. And, um, uh-oh, hold on one second. Clint can't see chat. Let me see. Was there a question on here? And so in August of 2018, she made an amazing donation of things to go into the auction as well as to go to Hardest's. And, um, and I still remember some of the goods today. And then she joined up as a volunteer helping to mail stuff by mailing to like 14 people almost right away. And that was pretty amazing. Um, wow. Yeah. And now, now we have over a hundred artists and, and it's, uh, and, and we had such a big growth in December of last year that, even though they qualify to be hardists, 69 people all at once joined um, in December of last year. And so I created a new program called Happy Packers, which is basically they qualify just like hardists, but the kits are different and they don't do like a smile list and stuff like that. Um, it's just a lighter, lighter kit or lighter project. And so it has to morph to grow with us, I oops. guess is what I'm saying. What was your oops? Oh, why are we, where'd you go? I lost Clint. Okay, hold your britches. Y'all are stuck with me now because I lost Clint. Let me see what the chat was so I know what to read. I'm sorry I popped out of there. Homemade cookies, coffee, rain, and friends. Holy smack of genolis. Are you see? I think we all need to go to Jean's porch and have us some cookies. Hi there, Judy. <laughs> I'll let Clint know that you're in chat. Hey Clint, guess who's in chat? Phil. Well, let me give you a clue. You know her very well. And you 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 told a story earlier and it included her name in the story. There I go getting picky on uh, what's what's on my page here. Mm -hmm. um, Is it my mom? Yeah, it's your mom. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I got disconnected and my um I hit the wrong button by accident. I was like, oops. 
Well, now we're even because I got disconnected on you earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, no, she jinxed me. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever it is, you can just blame me. I'll take the blame. Okay, hard. How dare you jinx me? I'm gonna <laughs> cry. <laughs> you know, it takes a lot for me to cry, and it's such a weird phenomenon. You know, and um, like you know the the folks that watch movies. Yeah, I I I don't know. I just it takes a lot. Now, now if it's where the kid was lost and the whole movie is about finding the kid and then the people find the kid, that'll tear me up. Those ones tear me up. But outside of that, I don't know. I just, I don't know why I just don't emotionally tie into movie stuffs. There's this one, um, one movie that I cried. Oh my gosh. It was called, um, Letter God. It's about this kid, little boy that and he writes letters, and the mailman actually reads them, and then he thinks that God has um, answered his um, questions and stuff, and and everything. And this little boy, little boy at the end, by I keep thinking about auction stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so this little boy died, and they played this one song called um, "Amazing Grace." Mm -hmm. As soon as that song, as soon as that song started playing, I bawled my eyes out. I was like, "That poor little boy died." And my mom goes, "Why are you crying?" I was like, "I don't know. It's just it's a beautiful song at first, and then I started crying at the end. I was like, I was like, it's so sad. And then every time there's like a, like there's like a, um, like a happy ending." Oh my mm -hmm. gosh, I cried those two. I'm like, such a happy ending. <laughs> I'm crying, I'll stop. <laughs> I love that my hubs does the same thing. And um, he's always looking over at me to see if I'm tearing up. And then after a while now, you know, we've been married long enough that he, he knows. But but I think it's a just sweet that he gets so touched by the movies. Yeah. Oh, I did too. Like if there's a wedding on a movie. Oh my gosh, I would cry my eyes out. My aunt and my uncle got married and I started bawling. I was like, <laughs> my girl was sitting there next to me. She goes, don't cry. It's just a wedding. I'm like, I know, but it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I cried every time. And my uncle's crying. Even though I was crying at first and then he looked at me and he started tearing up. I was like, all right, I better stop crying, y'all. I'm going to have I'm going to have burning eyeballs here in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was a good wedding. They got married in a in a in a in a court to where the judge came up and then married them and as soon as I, I, I got done crying, my uncle started crying. I was like, everybody's crying in here. My sister started crying. Everybody was crying in the courtroom because my aunt and uncle got married. I was like, you're all such a mess. Look at me. I'm already sucking away <laughs> from all these tears. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. <laughs> um, oh, hold on. My computer did something funky. What is up with my computer today? Jean says she cries at movies and TV shows. And Arlene said, <laughs> I didn't cry at any movies till menopause. Geez, glad that's over. <laughs> 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 Are you getting stuff ready for um like for um the monthly uh packages for everyone or are you still doing the other thing? Well, Today, I am just hanging out. I don't know if people know, but One-Legged Witchy Woman is the person who prints all the digitals that go into the packages. And uh -huh. um, Jean, Kim, and myself are the ones who mail all the packages oh. to everyone. 
And so this month's kit isn't for everyone because it's only for the people who would say smoker yes, or specifically say they want the cigar box project because, you know, cigar boxes sometimes smell like cigars. You know what I mean? So I wouldn't want to send it to folks who are, you know, yeah. not sensitive on things. And so um, Jean and Kim are doing the other ones. And so Laura is printing based on how many people wanted the cigar boxes. And so we were waiting until we heard from everyone or at least had enough time pass before, um, before we knew who wanted them and who didn't want them, you know? And so just yesterday, yeah. we decided how many Laura's printing. Um, and she knew how many total, just how many are going to be sent to me, how many go to Kim and how many go to Jean. And so just so she'll be sending those out. And when when I receive them is when I'm packing the the boxes for the hardest packages this month. I do have oh, it. Nice. Like all the cigar boxes are sitting on the shelves and I'm going to have enough cigar boxes to do a good project with it, um, even after giving it to every hardest, which is amazing. We had we had um, local donations on those and we had folks who mailed those um, and, and they're they're just cool. They're just really, really cool. I don't know why, but I, wow. wanted, I just love cigar boxes, though. <laughs> Girl, I tell you, it, you and Jean are two peas in a pod. Oh, my gosh. Every time you all do an auction, I could just hear, Jean, why are you putting your face up in the screen? <laughs> <laughs> it just cuts me up. I was like, are they arguing? I was like, no, but they're two peas in a pod. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, we're not doing an auction this month in September. The only thing we're doing in September is um, a sweepstakes where people buy entries to win one of those. Have you ever seen those automatic die cut machines where it just goes and you're not winding it? Well, Tim Holtz made yeah. one and it's called the Vagabond. And so that's this month's um, sweepstakes, and that's the only fundraiser we're doing. And so, oh wow, yeah, because the the monthly auction is always the second Saturday, right? And yeah, I didn't, I didn't want to. The second Saturday in September falls on nine eleven, um, and so that really just bothers me to do something on nine eleven. Um, I just don't want to, uh, it doesn't feel right, especially on the 20th anniversary, you know? And so with that said, I am just, uh, you know, it's, it's a hit that the, that the foundation is going to take, but it just feels like the right thing to do. You know what I mean? So, yeah, a hit as in we, you know, we don't, we're, we're going to be spending more than we're earning this month. That's for sure. <laughs> this is definitely for sure. Yeah, but but it's still the right thing to do, you know. Yeah, that sounds like fun. Yeah. Okay, stay. I think I don't so, know. how old were you when you started crafting? <clears throat> well, I guess it depends on how you define the crafting. I mean, um, I think that. When I became serious about it, I was an adult, not a kid. Um, but when I was in middle school, I had an art teacher who proved to me that I could actually um, draw or paint or create. And I think teachers like that are really important. And so I didn't really spend a lot of time doing it, but I did, I did, uh, in, enjoy it when I would sit down and doodle or draw or something. I'm not a big doodler, although one of my favorite childhood memories was actually a doodle. Um, but, oh my gosh, look at these roller skates. Oh, those are awesome. They're really awesome. Um, but I, I did love to sing. And to me, singing is art. And so back in the day, I was in church and I was in choir and 
you know, any kind of creative thing that you do, I, th I think as long as we just keep doing it and stop letting other people judge us or ourselves judge ourselves that, that, you know, we do it anyway. You know, I have seen people tell other people, well, that's what kids do. And I just don't believe that. I think that it's what everyone should do. There is no thing. You know, it's so funny, but I think I kind of just like it with those couple of things. I'm just going to make you smaller. Oh, we should have a tiny word, huh? Let's see what we have in here. Well, this dress is turning out gorgeous. Hi, Tay. Let me see if I can make you all. Okay, so that's zoomed in the same. Hang on just a moment, though. Uno momento, por favor. <laughs> I'm being clever and using my scissors. Because <laughs> I'm using hot glue and stuff, and I don't want to burn my fingers like I did the last time. Uh-oh. Uh, hot glue scares me. I know, it does to me, too. I'm like, I tried to, I tried to put my finger back as quick as I can because I could feel the heat on the, on the very tip of the hot glue gun. I'm like, ooh. And I jump back a little bit, and I put my hand back. I'm like, okay, what can I do to protect my fingers? <laughs> <laughs> so I use my scissors to tap the glue down and stuff so that I don't have to use my fingertips. I'm like, ooh, that's going to burn. Yeah, I, I One time I was... Oh, go ahead. One time I was gluing something down like a pom-pom on a, on a Christmas project. The mm -hmm. glue was dripping. I mean, it literally brought my finger right up to here, and I had a huge blister right up in this area oh. right here. Oh. And yeah. I went to go, and I went to the bathroom, and I thought, well, I can just let it heal for a couple of days, and then I can take the blister off. You know what I mean? So I took a little needle, ball needle, mm -hmm. and I poked at it. A bunch of liquid stuff came out of it, so I had to put my finger in the inside of the um sink and i washed it off and stuff i didn't feel no pain or nothing wow yeah that was a tough one one goes you're for the me i would have been screaming i'm like well let's just say that i killed my finger <laughs> <laughs> yeah i busted my thumb open one time too and i was helping my grandma I'm helping her um open up a can of um uh, of um pork beans for dinner because i stayed on now with her well mm -hmm. she had one of those um handheld um can openers to kind of twist like a like a key or something yeah i have one like that and uh well i got stuck and then it would then what it stuck so i'm like okay i got halfway open now i can't get this thing to go into a chamois get a spoon out and push the lid up a little bit so she can pour the pork beans inside of the pan well i went to go do that with the spoon i'm in my right hand my right thumb slipped and went on top of that lid where the sharp edge was and it literally cut my thumb open from the inside and i went into the hospital and I was getting ready to go in to get checked out. Well, they had a towel around my thumb. And I went to unravel it. A piece of that piece of skin that was next to my thumb was hanging down like it was dangling. Oh my word. So what they do. And so they um, brought me into the back of the room where the beds were. They mm -hmm. brought me in, they cleaned my thumb out, they cleaned my thumb. From the inside and out, because I had blood everywhere on it. And um, they numbed it real good. They didn't, like, put the needle inside of my thumb. They just had me tilt it to the side, like, like this. And then they just mm -hmm. took the needle and just, like, squirted it in there. And they cleaned it out with water and stuff. And the nurse comes in and she goes, you're very tough. I'm like, I am tough. <laughs> It sounds like they're tough. No, the only time that I felt something was when they put the last stitch 
inside of my thumb because I almost had it to the nail, but they had to glue the part of the nail back on and then stitch the rest of it. Now, the, time, the only time I felt it was when they put the last stitch inside of my thumb. Oof. And I guess that the numbness wore off and everything, but I didn't feel it after they put the last stitch on. But oh my gosh, my thumb was itching so bad. I was wanting to bite it. I was like, <laughs> can't do it because I was like, I cannot bite it because it might, but the stitches might come out. So I went back to get the stitches out. And they go, how do you feel now? I was like, relieved because I wanted to bite my thumb so bad it was itching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They say you can bite it gently, just don't pull out the stitches. I'm like, I wasn't trying to, I was just going on the sides and on the top, and I felt better after that. Well, Arlene says she rarely uses hot glue. Someone has to be with her because in her she has one hand that doesn't work and one that does. And the one that does work is the one that um, has, it, it has no feeling. So to use hot glue with no feeling would definitely be a little bit dangerous. Yeah, yeah I did not know anything. When I started crafting, I, I started crafting when I was about hmm, 11 years old because my grandma taught me how to do a lot of different things like sewing, crocheting, knitting, uh, plastic canvas. All kinds of things, and I didn't know not I did not know nothing about hot glue back then. And then when I moved here, I started using hot glue. I was like, I'm gonna try using some hot glue. Started using all this wet glue that I have laying around, and so I used some hot glue and I tested it on a project. I'm like, all right, let me see if I can get this sucker off because I put a bead on a project, and I was like, okay, let it dry for a few seconds. And I'm like. Now, let me see if I can get it off. I'm like pulling on it, yanking on it. I'm like, oh, this baby won't budge. I'm like, sweet. So I started using hot glue ever since. Jubilation came in. Uh, she said hi to everyone. So what do you think, Care? Oh, my gosh. That's so cute. <laughs> what a pile of yummies on that thing that is fabulous not bad for a, not not bad for a 30 year old <laughs> <laughs> that we're all we, I, I say we should always just feel like we're kids that's how it should always be the folks who say inner child and you know my, my kids say they're adulting and I just say, instead of adulting, I'm always kidding. You know, I just always. <laughs> All right. Have you ever done pranks on anyone? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Especially around April, April uh, uh, 1st. But you know what? I forget what that's called. April Fool's uh -huh. Day. Yeah. Love that. Uh-huh. Ha and and I have a funny one for you. The prank that was pulled on me by my kids. I have a bunch of those prank stories actually, because we've done a few of them. But um, one of them was I used to have a Jeep Wrangler, and um, uh -huh. my kids cut. And you can picture a white Jeep Wrangler sitting in the garage, and um, this is years ago now, and. Um, I go out to the garage to get in my vehicle and every inch of it was covered in post-it notes. And so they had taken post-it notes about normal size. And because a Jeep's already kind of square, they had it all lines and lines and lines of post-it notes. <laughs> and that was, that was pretty funny. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> But what about you? Well, what I got a funny. <laughs> well, it was during Halloween. My little cousin just turned five, and we went. They went to a park to celebrate her birthday. Well, they had these big Halloween bowls to like, if you like, fill up the candy for like trick or treaters or whatever. But well, they had some little decorations in it. I was like, 
I seen this fake little spider. It was just a tiny little thing. And I'm like, oh, I know what to do with this. And I asked my cousin, I said, can I have this little spider? He goes, yeah, it's for everybody. I was like, okay. So I stuck it in my pocket. And when I got home, I told my sister, I said, so I went in there and I stuck the spider on the counter on the by sink. And I said, Aaron, you need to go to the bathroom. You better go because I got to go bad. And she goes, no, I ain't going to go in there. I was like, darn it. And I, I said, real quiet. I was like, shoot. I was like, what can I do? And so I waited and waited and waited and waited. And finally, I was like, Aaron, go to the bathroom if you got to go. And she goes, all right, fine. She she turns on the light in the bathroom. <laughs> she starts screaming. She goes, Mom, get the spider out. Kill it, kill it, kill it. Get it out, get it out, get it out. And she hid behind my grandfather's chair that he used to sit in. And she goes, I'm afraid to go in there and kill it. I was dying. I was like, Aaron, that one's in a real spider. And she goes, what do you mean? She goes, and I said, it was fake. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's and she goes, and she said, I hate you. I ain't talking to you for the rest of the day. Goodbye. <laughs> no man talked to me since. <laughs> and I said, Aaron, I'm sorry. It's just a long way. And she goes, no, leave me alone. Shut up. I don't want to talk to you. I was like, ooh, fine then. Uh-oh. Finally came out, and she goes, and then she goes, what are you doing in here? And then she goes, oh. I forgot. I wasn't supposed to talk to you, and I said, you just did. <laughs> when when my hubs picks on me, I actually am like a little kid. I'll be like, I'm not talking to you. I'm not talking to you. He's like, well, you're talking to me, telling me you're not talking to me. I'm like, well, no, it doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> I did a prank on my mom one time. <laughs> it was, she was in the kitchen doing dishes and stuff. I went in there and while she wasn't looking and I stuck right behind her and I just scared her. I just went, bah! she looked at me, she took a towel, she rolled it up with her fingers. It just swapped me with it. I was like, how what was that for? She goes, you little butt head. I was like, well, have a good day. <laughs> and my grandma did one on me. She had this big bag of um, Hershey Kisses that I I love Hershey Kisses and I'll take the aluminum foil off and I'll just play with the aluminum foil till it rips. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I had 10 of them on, up on the table and I went into the bathroom and uh, and so I came back out and I was like, where's all my Hershey Kisses? My grandma goes, I ate them. I was like, oh. <laughs> ain't them already? And she goes, yeah, I ate them. Well, I put more on the table, and I went into the kitchen to get a drink. Those were gone. I was like, what the heck? Cookies in all of my Hershey's. Like, the grief. <laughs> and I was I'm going to put Don't 10 we? more in here. And there was like 10. And so there was 10 left inside of the bowl. So I decided to take them out, and I was laying down on the couch watching TV. And I was like, okay, girl, I'm going to fall asleep for a little bit. And when I wake up, I'll eat her. She goes, she goes, all right. So I wake up for, I went, I went to sleep for like a couple of hours when I got over there. And when I started eating them, I was like, all right, I'm going to take a little nap and I'll be up. Well, I got up. Those were gone. I was like, Jiminy Crickets, who is eating all my Hershey Kisses around here? <laughs> That's funny. And she goes, and she goes, I ain't those two. I'm like, oh, man, I've got no Hershey kisses left. I'm like, what am I going to do? And she started laughing. And she goes, I did. You know what she did? She hit him in her lap to where I couldn't see him. I was like, oh, so that's where you hit him. Oh, that's <laughs> She got me going that time. I was like, darn it, where's all my Hershey kisses? I, I do love. I do love Hershey Kisses. I love um, Oreos. Last night I had some Oreos for a snack. What's your favorite snack besides Hershey Kisses? 
Oh gosh, I like chocolate chip cookies. I like um, Cheetos. Not the not the kind that's like the size of a hot dog, but the kind that's well, the little big big things, whatever you want to come to little stick ones. Mm -hmm. I like those. I like um, Hershey drops. What are Hershey kinda drops? Like, I've never heard of those. They're kind of like. They're, they're like this big and they're and they're Hershey Kisses, but they're formed into a circle. They're like maybe that big, but they're called wow. Hershey Drops. Never and I like, the, oh yeah, I like those. I like Tootsie Rolls. I like Tootsie Pop. I Almost do love anything them. except for a strawberry. I like anything except for a strawberry and blueberries. All the question, yuck. <laughs> You mean the actual fruit? What time I'm... Yeah, the actual fruit. I cannot stand the smell of strawberries or blueberries. I don't know why. It's just my sense of smell just doesn't agree with it. Well, one time my, my mom's boyfriend, we went to, to a restaurant down the, down the road from my house. And he ordered me and my sister a blueberry muffin. And then I had like chocolate milk with it. And uh, I came home. I was doing just fine, and next thing I knew, I went to that bathroom. I started coughing and coughing and coughing. I was like, oh, my God, what is going on? Well, I did not know you weren't supposed to mix, put chocolate milk with blueberry muffins. I was like, why didn't anybody tell me? And I got sick for, I was sick for, like, the whole entire night. I was sick for the rest of the night. I did not get out of bed. I was like, mom. I got a bet. I said, never again will I eat blueberry stuff or strawberry stuff. I'm like, that's out of the question. I'm like, I'm chocolate. sorry. Yeah, I've eaten chocolate chips with blueberry muffins and all kinds of muffins. I love muffins. Right now, downstairs, we have cornbread muffins, which are very cakey like cornbread. Oh, I like cornbread. It's so good. Oh, I know, right? <laughs> Definitely happy space. Oh my gosh, girl. I remember one time my, my grandfather got me into eating chocolate. He was a he was a chocoholic. He would eat anything chocolate and candy wise. Like he would eat Twizzlers, um, um, bottle caps, um, lifesavers, the mint. Wait, what kind. are bottle caps? Like, um, you know, like have you seen the glass bottles where they have the little caps that have the little, the little um, pointy things on the bottom? No, no, I haven't. Obviously, I need to improve my candy skills. <laughs> well, these bottle caps are round. They're kind of like, um, like, um, they're circle shaped bottle caps, but they're like different flavors. They got like root beer, Coca Cola, um, different flavors. Yeah. But um, but they come in a, a I think like a purple box. I'm not 100 percent sure, but I think they come inside of a purple box. Um, but yeah, he call they call them bottle caps i don't know why but they come in different flavors and i tried it one day i was like oh these are so good and they had these um root beer bottle root beer um barrels barrel candies oh they're good mm -hmm. mm. i do like i the tried those candies. and candies yeah those are good yeah and um and so uh one day I was over at my grandmom's and he had Twizzlers. I was like, ooh, can I try one? He goes, yeah. So I tried one. Oh my gosh, they were good. <laughs> I tried the, I tried those uh, orange type of on uh, my grassy. Ugh, were they disgusting? I'm like, oh, I cannot eat this. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, but that flavor is just blech. She goes, eat it. I was like, fine. So I ate it, and I swallowed it. I was like, don't feed me no more of those. Please don't. I'm like, she goes, you don't like them? I was like, no, they're 
just gross. Have you ever Not seen my flavor? Those, have you ever seen those little candies that are on a sheet of paper and they look like a bunch of little dots? I don't know what they're called. When you said bottle caps, that's what my brain remembered. Jean said bottle caps are actually an older candy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've seen those little candies on the sheet. Yeah, I've seen those. I like those ones. Oh, I do too, girl. Mm. I like any kind of candy. Whatever, strawberry and blueberry flavor, don't give it to me because I won't eat it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that I'm allergic to it. It's just I don't like the flavor. I don't like the kind of... Ugh. Sorry, that's just not me. But my mom, she loves strawberries. Oh, my gosh. If you get her a, a whole container full of strawberries, she'll have them gone in three days without no doubt. I have a kid and a grandkid like that with blueberries. Oh, my gosh. Can't get enough blueberries. They wouldn't last in the fridge. I mean, I don't know. I, I haven't seen my grandkids now with COVID for so long. They're not with COVID. I mean, with COVID in the world, you know. And so. Yeah, it, it, it's bad. Things. Yeah, it, it's terrible here in my area. I mean, I don't go out hardly anymore unless I'm forced to go out and do something. But if, but if I'm going to Dollar Tree or Dollar General or something, I'll go. But it was just uh, down the street to get medication or something. I'd just stay here. Or, or if my mom and sister have an appointment, I'd just stay home and craft. Yeah. Like, I, 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 um, I stayed up until like 6 o'clock in the morning. And I made a whole bunch of wooden from like stars to hearts to picture frames. Picture frames. I did all that and then, oh yeah, and then I painted a bunch of other stuff and then, um, and so I got all that done the other night and I still got a few more. Um, one of the things that I need to work on, I've got like wooden flowers, they're you know, like little tiny ones, and I'm gonna work on those. And I got some wooden crosses. Um, Arlene, who was here, Arlene, who was here earlier, she um, is amazing at making crosses, she's really good at it. You know how you can make, you know, those plastic canvas hearts that you, some people donate and they, um, and they got the little holes in it or whatever. Yeah. I found an easy way to, I found an easy way to do it instead of just using the yarn through it. I found a different way to do it, to decorate yeah. them. Yeah. You just go around the edge of the, of a cross mm -hmm. and they just like put glue on there on the, on the corners. Only just the corners, and then leave the um, leave the middle part alone, and then and then like cut it, like cut it, like fussy cut it out, and then you got the front side of the crossing, and it's got that fabric on the front, and so the back, and you can just decorate it that way and done that. Well, that makes sense, and that's with the canvas, plastic canvas stuff. Uh-huh. You can use it for, like, um, you can put, like, fabric on it. You just got to glue the shape on there. Like, just do around the edges. Just do around the edges only and leave the middle part alone. Unless you want to glue the whole thing on there. Yeah. But, uh, um. but what I did is I took, um, I got a sample one I can show you real quick if you if, um, oh, yeah. let's see. Stephanie said the candy yes. on paper, they're called buttons. I think you're right. I think that is what they're called. And hi there, Stephanie. Hold on one second. I'm going to find. All right. Arlene, you totally deserve that because your, your crosses are so fantastic. Actually, I bet you Clint would love your art style. He likes steampunk, too. All right, I know these totally don't go, but that's what I feel like putting on the paper. <laughs> oh, let me put something else on it. There it is. 
chasing dreams. So it does not look like a normal cluster, but would be cute on a journal page. Oh, that is so cute. It is. It's it's silly together, but it does. When when I lived on a boat, it wasn't a sailboat. It was a boat with a two engines. So here's the plastic camera art. Um, yeah. Cross. Silly me. Heart. What am I thinking about? <laughs> So what you do, you just go from here to here, mm -hmm. and you glue that down, and then you go from here, you just do like, from down here, go down here, go this way, go that way, and just keep on going until you get the whole entire corners done. And then you put it down on the fabric, like this. Let me see, I can turn it over. Like that, and then when it's all glued down and cooled off and stuff, you take your scissors and you just cut it out like this. Oh, and yeah. And then you get that great. So you do it like that, and you, then you just cut it out, and then you can decorate the front of it. And then you can put like a piece of string to hang it on your wall or something. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's the easiest way I did it. And I made, and I crocheted um, a bunch of flowers the other day. I made about a dozen of them. Oh, yeah? Do you have those nearby? Would love to see those ones. Yeah. And I'm going to do a tutorial on it today on my channel when I, um, yep, just a second. I need to find your channel and I can put that link in here. <clears throat> Um, what is your channel name again? Judy, do you know if you have his channel in there? I did not know there was a stock car racer named Clint Hedge. <laughs> what did I miss? <laughs> I was trying to find your YouTube link so I could go to your channel. Are you subscribed uh, to my channel, Care? I don't, I don't I am, remember. But I'm subscribed to like 400 something channels, so finding it is a beast. <laughs> What's the, what is the title of your channel? Do you remember? It's Clint Hedges, but um, it's called Clint Crafting. Oh, Clint Crafting. Okay. Yes. Yeah, gear on the. You'll see it. Okay, hold your britches. <laughs> I love it when you say that, and I'm like, I oh, better pull my bridges, did. <laughs> uh, Christy Biddleston. Oh, I see your face there in images. Um, Clint Hedges crafting. Let's go to videos. I'm gonna find you. Dagnabbit. I'm gonna go to YouTube see if I can find it that way. Um. Yeah, Christy made a post where it was this person holding a horse upside down by their back right and um said hold your horses <laughs> in the um in the meme <laughs> and clint crafting it should come up for me oh there we are okay and with gears i know it's your channel okay let me yep. have this and drop it in our chat. You're wearing a dress, can't hold your britches. My kids say that just means you got to hold your unders. And so, yeah. <laughs> if, you don't, if you don't have on, oh my gosh, this lady's a hoot. She just a freaking uh, hoot. She belongs so on an ATC card. Here's the flower I crocheted. Oh my gosh, I love that. Wow, I really love that. Oh my gosh, she so fits on this page. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Oh my gosh, that is pretty. Okay, you know what? We're going to make an ATC. Really hmm. quick.
Um, where's my cutting thing? Two and a half by three and a half. I need. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to do a tutorial on how to crochet these little flowers. If anybody wants to come in and join me, you're all more than welcome to. You just got to subscribe, click my button, click the subscribe button, and then ring my bell and notify when I go live or post a new video. It does make me start singing the ring my bell song. Ring my bell, ding, 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 ding. I'm here. <laughs> I'm like, all right, I see you down there. I'm up here. I'm right Hi. here with this person right here, right here, right here. <laughs> <laughs> two and a half by three and a half it always looks so tiny when you put it in your hand doesn't it oh yeah it looks really tiny it does all right so, so i got um some atc cards for you i got about 44 made so far Ooh. But if you need more um, ATC cards, I'll be more than happy to make a bunch of a bunch more for you. Well, that is that is awesome. Um, hold your bridges. Yeah, I I think that the ATC cards for people who are hardists, then they earn credits when they send in ATC cards, and people who are not hardists. If, you know, when they send in ATC cards, we're going to be making kits where I send an ATC card that non-hardists make with a bunch of blank ones. So, for instance, like this is two and a half by three and a half. So it'll be like a little stack of blank ones for them to make ATCs with a sample or two of ATCs that, you know, folks who are angels have made that way. Hardists can collect ATCs made by other people too. And in my brain, one of the rules of ATCs is that, you know, it should be gifted, you know, and I, I really like that where the ATCs are gifted. Oh, I agree. Yeah. Um... Oh, there's something else I can show you that I started doing. Oh, yeah. I started making um, Halloween decorations. <clears throat> that is my favorite holiday. I don't know if you know Mine too, one. girl. Oh, my gosh. I bet you in about another month, this whole room will be nothing but Halloween decorations. Because <laughs> I can't find more stuff in here than ever. I'm like... <laughs> Yeah, like I'm making I a a foam I'm making a foam um Halloween garland with like pins and ghosts and bats and cats and all kinds of things. So why do you love Halloween? What is your your reasoning behind that one? Um, when I was younger, my grandmother decorated her house for Halloween, mm -hmm. and um. I think I was around 11 when she started decorating her house for Halloween and she had um, decorations out like a hanging skeleton and um, a werewolf, a witch, um, a bunch of little things that she made. Um, I just fell in love with Halloween when I was growing up and I just loved the decorations decorations that everybody had in their yards and inside their houses i'm like oh my gosh that'd be so perfect my craft room oh my gosh i'll be like "Ooh, what's that I'm like "Ooh, that's pretty i want that <laughs> i just like halloween i'm halloween to me it's just part of me just likes to decorate you know and and then Christmas I liked because my grandma had a bunch of Christmas decorations. She has, she gave me the Santa. It sits in a rocking chair and you put batteries underneath the rocking chair and it rocks mm -hmm. back and forth and it sings jingle bells. And she made um, Christmas trees. She uh, made, um, 
she had a bunch of ornaments she had like a fiber optic tree and i just fell in love with those two holidays and any other I holiday i don't I was but just any say other holiday oh go ahead but any other holiday i don't decorate for because i don't got the room in here you know i i only decorate for halloween and christmas that's pretty much it well that makes sense um i am more of i like halloween because you know when i was a kid i wasn't allowed to <clears throat> celebrate it but then when i had kids i think halloween feels like that holiday where you are um able to just be something else like it's it's you can dress up you can be silly you can be young forever i just i love that you know so that's my and i thing. still and when i was growing up i never i didn't have a chance to really decorate my room because i didn't have a whole lot but now i got a lot i'm like oh my gosh how did i end up with all this stuff like <laughs> <laughs> purple heart and these purple flowers for instance these might be a good idea for like a halloween project or something i love purple with halloween i, I you know i i know what it's supposed to be on um you know it, like i don't know orange and whatever but i love purple and you know the color wheel you see the color wheel together and you don't really think of purple and orange right but i love purple and orange together i think those are two fabulous colors together I did too, and I'm like, you know what? I got a bunch of purple flowers that I just yanked out of my stash. I'm like, oh, these would be perfect for like a Halloween project, and I could just make it into a banner. I would say like Happy Halloween or something, and I could put it across my desk. Yeah, how fun is that? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, I decorate more for Halloween and Christmas than I do any other holiday, you know, and Summertime, I decorate for the summer, and spring and summer and fall, I decorate for that. And oh my gosh, I can't find my pencils, which I always have. Uh oh. So I'll have to use my little bag of stubbies. Oh, those are pretty. Aren't they fun? The little color pencils. I collect those. Um, um, a friend of mine taught me how to make um, how to make uh, your own alcohol inks instead of just buying them. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I prefer to make lots of my own. Um, ingredient type stuff. Yeah. I remember that one um, video you did. You taught um, your own jelly plate and how to make your own loose and stuff. I'm like, oh my gosh, she is so good at this kind of stuff. How does she do it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm sitting here coloring without my glasses on. So y'all don't judge me because my glasses are downstairs and that's just too darn far to go because I didn't need glasses for clusters. So. <laughs> okay. Oh no, I hardly wear my glasses anymore. I mean, I get good. I can see like a button. I see like what you're making, and like if I'm like too far, like if I'm way far in the back where the closet is, I can't see anything. But if I like really, really, really close. I'm like, oh, I'm too close. And I'm like, okay, I can see you now better. <laughs> yeah. I actually am going to force myself to color outside of the lines here in a little bit, which is a really difficult thing for me to do because, you know, um, I like coloring inside the lines because those are the rules. And I follow, I'm that person who I don't jaywalk because it's against the rules, you know? I do if I'm right. talked to it or with family members and there's no crosswalk anywhere nearby, you know, that kind of stuff. But <laughs> yeah. Um, so coloring outside the lines is kind of like jaywalking for me, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult not to do. 
And so I'm going to put in, hmm. lay down some color, and then the rest is just going to be messy on purpose. I remember when I was in, I, my teacher taught me how to color just neatly and not like scrub all the lines and everything. Mm -hmm. Well, I was coloring this one little piece of paper and I had a little, like a little design on it. And I was trying to color it and girl, I'm like, oh no. Because I accidentally went out, instead of staying in the line, I went over the line, not onto the blank side. I'm like, oops. And she said, don't worry, you can always cut it out. I was like, all right. So I cut it out. I just acted like I didn't know nothing. <laughs> Well, there is something to be said for forcing yourself to color outside of the lines, like these little triangles making stars instead of coloring in the triangles. I think there's forces me out of my comfort zone. You know, the whole science behind creating art is that if people do what they're comfortable with, it doesn't have as much of the same effects emotionally on the chemicals in our brain and such as if you... Um, do stuff that you're not comfortable with, if that makes sense. You know, because yeah. you have to think more. If, if you're really comfortable with it and you're doing it, then then you're hardly thinking about what you're creating, you know? And so... Yeah, I agree. And I always so, tell people, too, crafting isn't... I mean, the projects that you make don't have to be perfect. I mean, they can go a little crooked, it can be straight, yeah. it can be sideways, it can be lopsided, and doesn't have to be perfect. I think that's what makes things beautiful to me. So when people gift items <clears throat> and handmade items, if it looks like you bought it at a store and you feel like you've made that perfect, well, how do I know that it's handmade? The flaws, like in a quilt or something, I think the flaws are what makes me go, oh, yeah, look at that. That's handmade. How awesome is that? You know, it travels <laughs> beyond the human. My mom, she's got OCD really bad. If she sees something crooked, and she'll walk back a little bit. And she goes, that looks crooked. I need to make it a little straight. I'm like, mom, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is the picture frame. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. I mean, she's, um, I mean she, she's got it bad. I'm like, oh, my gosh, woman. She's like, stand up for a minute. i got to fix this picture for you. I'm like, oh, mom, it's not supposed to be perfect. I mean, come on. Can't even, I, I can't get, even notice it laying here. I get it. My, um, my kids one time, um, and this is when they were still living at home now. <laughs> now one of them has, one of them has a kid, but two of my girls um were sitting in the office with me and and uh what happened was i walked out of the office and was coming right back right and when i walked yeah. out of the office and um, the kids took a little box and tilted i'll move my little thing they took a little box and they tilted the top and it was sitting on my desk and as soon as I came back, I mean, it's no different than just sitting like, you know, this comes off and it's it's off to the side. Right. So as soon as I came yeah. back, first thing I did was twist it back. So it was sitting proper <laughs> and they <laughs> laughed out laughing and I didn't even realize that they had done that. I just, you know, it was just as soon as I sat down, that was the first thing I did. I did something funny to my mom one time and she had a. She had a little bowl of garbage, right? And I seen this little piece of paper in there. And she goes, don't touch that. That's garbage. I'm like, all right. She'll walk in into the kitchen. I'll make sure my sister ain't watching. I'll be looking around and make sure no one's watching or looking at me while I'm doing that. And I did the whole thing of trash on the table. My uncle goes, Clint Edward. I start <laughs> laughing. I was like, that's a prank for you. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I bet you got in trouble gonna a little kick, bit for that one. <laughs> kick your butt. She goes, I'm gonna, yeah, she she said that. She goes, I'm going to kick your butt, boy. <laughs> she goes, quit <laughs> it. I'm like, sorry. That's <laughs> she, she'll say, she'll say, go to bed. I'm like, if I go to bed now, I won't, I won't wake up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be asleep all day and not wake up until the next morning. Oh, my gosh. I remembered when I had my colonoscopy because mm -hmm. I had because I had um, particular um, diverticulitis. Yeah, and it was real bad. I mean, I I 
I started. I stuttered because I was hurting so bad. I was like, Mom, please take me to the hospital. Mm. And so they uh, put me on medication. And well, um, they did a colon test on me to see if something was going on up there. And Mama said, we're going to have a pizza for dinner. I looked at her. My eyes were blurry at first. And I looked at her. I was like, we're going to have a peanut for dinner. And she goes, peanut? I was like, yeah, we're having peanut for dinner. <laughs> and I was just out of it. I couldn't get my word on it. She goes, pizza. And I said, did I say? And she goes, go to sleep. I'm like, okay. So I'm going <laughs> back to sleep. I wake up. <laughs> And I'm on the couch just asleep, and I mean, I didn't get up until nighttime. I was around maybe almost midnight. I was like, oh, my gosh, what did I do in my sleep? She goes, my mom said, you were talking funny in your sleep. I'm like, huh? I said, funny. And she goes, you said peanut. I was like, oh, I thought you said we're having peanuts for dinner. She goes, no, I said pizza. I was like, oh, pizza. Okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too funny. I mean, I couldn't get my words. I couldn't get my words out. I was like, oh my gosh, what made me do that? I don't know. I think I was just in a deep sleep or something. <laughs> I did not want to wake up out of that couch and and I walked inside that I walked inside the door and I plucked my butt on that couch and as soon as I closed my eyes, I was out. I didn't get out. I didn't get out until dark. I was like what time is it? She goes, something, something. I was like, oh, my God, I slept that long. She goes, yeah, you didn't even budge. I'm like, well, then I guess I better go to the men's room, and then I'll get wake up a little bit, and I'll come in and eat some of that pizza. <laughs> <laughs> and, girl, I was so hungry. When I when they put me on that medicine, I seen mm -hmm. my sister had uh, – she had these um, Reese's bean bread cups on the coffee table, and I wanted one so bad. I was like, oh, <laughs> like I'm sick of this freaking diet. I want to eat something bad. And my mom goes, you can't have those mm -hmm. into your, into your, don't you have I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> I wanted to eat so bad regular food. I was like, oh, I'm hungry. My mom goes, do you want some more soup? I'm like, ugh, I'd rather have, I'd rather have regular food than anything. And they made me drink the sour stuff. It was nasty. It smelled like grapes at first. I'm like, ooh, grape flavor. I took one big, suck, big sip of it. It took my breath away. I was like, ooh, sour. Mom said, you can do it, you can do it. I was like, hi, Lois. And I just took one big gulp of it. I was like, ugh. And that's when that was when I had my procedure done. Yeah. And um, I took one big gulp of it. I was like, I am done with it. I just had a little bit left in the bottle. I was like, I can't do it. It's killing me. It's taking my breath away. I'm like, okay, I'll do it. I took one more big gulp. I was done with that bottle. I was like, ugh, never <laughs> again. <laughs> That's too funny. I mean, my, Lois, I mean, Lois my, uh, what we're doing today, if you uh, want to share what you're making. Yeah, sure. I'll be happy to show you what I'm making. Well, so today, when I get a chance to, whenever I can, I'll, I'm going to do a tutorial on how to make, how to crochet these, um, little flowers that I made. It's got like five petals, and these are easy to make. And I'll teach you how to do that. And then I worked on this cute little dress right here. I, I call it a chubby sheet dress. That is so And it's got a lot of neats. Yeah. And I'm just going to... So what I'm gonna do is when I get a chance to because it's like dangling like that. So I'm gonna glue the do that and then later on today I'll do the back side of this. 
and do the bikes out of their stress, and then their stress will be done. And then when I get done, I'll teach you all how to make um, how to make these flowers. And they're simple and easy to make. Easy peasy. It takes like five to ten minutes to make. It seems like a mighty fun day. Oh, yeah. And then I got some wooden stuff that I want to paint and stuff like that. So I'm going to do that. And if anybody wants to join me on the panel, they could, all they have to do is um, <clears throat> ask me, and then I can send them the link. Oh, that's cool. I mean, I can't send it in the chat for some reason. I don't know why, but the only way I was able to do it was through email. Lois asked who the dress is for. Do you have someone? Um, I'm going to eventually sell it because we're having a, we're planning on having a yard sale soon. And I just, I'm just making stuff to put in yard sale. And I got a lot of stuff for me here already. So a lot of stuff that I made for myself is here in the craft room and whatever else I make, I'll probably end up selling and keeping and stuff like I got, um, like little summertime stuff, like charms and um, like little charm ducks, duck charms and all kinds of stuff. And all of that, I'm, it's in the back of my closet. You know, it's right up here on my shelf. All of that I'm going to use. And then, and then, um, I have to go on the yard sale. And then I think I have enough stuff to sell. For now, but then um, I think they're okay for now. So nice. when I get this done, I'll put it in. A lot of the stuff I'll make for the yard sale, and then a lot of stuff I'll make for myself because I don't hardly make stuff for myself like I did. So. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're making but, stuff yeah. for yourself because I think that's important that we do that as well. You know, so many people are out there doing all the stuff and and for other people and we got to take the time to do things for ourselves too i believe i firmly believe that now, i'm trying really hard to color outside the lines and it's struggling in my brain y'all it's struggling in my, even trying to color outside the lines i'm still i'm still in the lines do you see this this is chaos chaos i say <laughs> I mean, there's times where I'll, I'll sit here and decide, do I really want to keep this or do I really want to sell it? And I'll put it out for a minute and I'm thinking and thinking and thinking. I'm like, this is too cold to get rid of. You know, I'm going to sell it. I'm going to keep it. Yeah. So I kept some stuff for myself, you know, and like, I'll show you something that I got in the mail the other day. You can find them. Okay. You're going to love these. And they're in here somewhere. It's either in the liver. Oh, never mind. They're right down here. Ha <laughs> ha. Underneath my desk. Uh -uh. Kara, can you uh, make me a little big, please? It's. All right. That's right, so. Lois. There's no. There's no sale for. Um, defy this month because it, the second Saturday falls on 9 11, and that just doesn't feel right. Y'all gonna love these. Look what I got in the mail. Oh, how exciting is that! For the love of comic books, do you like reading comic books? Oh, yeah, I like reading comic books and um. I got two of these. I got I got this one. And then I got oh these ones right here. This one right here. Mm -hmm. I got these two in the I got these two in I got these two in the mail. And I would sit in the living room and read these all day. If I don't when I get a chance to, I'll um I think later on today I'll show you these comic books and how I um 
and show you some of the pictures and stuff in the comic books and everything. And um, I'll use my, I'll use my um, big camera thing that I got over here on my bed. And I got, I got two stands. I got, no, I got one and I got a selfie camera up here, which is on my, um, on the one third shelf. I got a selfie stick. That's because you got to love your selfie. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, I'm such a dork. <laughs> but yeah, I read common books and chapter books. And if I get done with it or something, if I don't want it no more, I'll just take it apart and use it for like a like a envelope or something for a junk journal. Yeah. <clears throat> I love using the the extra stuff in junk journals. The unusual stuff. I mean, it's nice to but, have the papers, but I, I like some of the junky stuff in the junk journals. I mean, I'll, I'll chat like, like, um, like uh, chapter books or stuff like that that has little pictures in it, but comic books, mm -hmm. I don't have a heart to really tear them up because they're a collector's item, you know? They come from, yeah, like, comic stores and everything, and I got a comic book store here in my area that I thought about going to. The glue and fibers on my desk. Oh, girl, I love fibers. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I still got the fibers you sent me. I love fibers. Oh, girl, I do too. I made um, the fibers that you sent me. I made um, tassels out of them. Oh, I love that. I love tassels. Girl, I, I like do too. I can... Jean and I have been talking about a couple of different projects, and uh, one of the things she's working on is something that's like a boho bead. And oh my uh -huh. gosh, I love boho beads. Yeah. I made some out of, um, I made a couple out of um, like straws and stuff, like those bendy straws. Wait till you see what she's making hers out of. She had her hubs doing some power tools to do hers and i think that's it just it's it's going to be cool it's going to be cool project there's it doesn't matter what the day is there's always some kind of a project coming up <laughs> <laughs> that's one of my favorite things about doing this honestly is coming up with the kid ideas and the project ideas that's the most fun i made I've made um, junk journal kits. I made two of them. I made a, I got like one that's for like butterflies and everything. I made, mm -hmm. I made a junk journal kit for that. And then I made another one to where it's like, um, like you take a piece of cardboard and you just fold it over. Mm -hmm. And then you can make, it's like a, kind of like a book almost, but you can cover it with, paper or fabric and I got two of them in my closet and I need to <sighs> excuse me I got the hiccups so bad <laughs> <laughs> um I hate that every time I drink something or eat something I get the hiccups and every time I see something I'm like <gasps> they're like why are you gossiping I'm like come down I just got the hiccups <laughs> <laughs> oh that's too funny I gotta write my name on and, the back of this y'all <clears throat> what what month is this nine Nine twenty. Yeah, nine sec nine second twenty yeah. twenty one. All right, there's my messy nine. ATC. Oh, that's so cool. I like that. Thank you. All right, let me show you what I make what I made. I'm I'm done now. I'm gonna have to go run and go pick up the mail for the week and drop off the mail for the week here pretty soon. 
And so here was my ATC, which I decided to make on a whim because I just loved her image so much with that other little lady. Look at her. Isn't that lady with her arms in the air fabulous? Oh she looks like Isn't Ursula. She, yeah. she looks like Ar Ursula from Little Mermaid. <laughs> she does, kind of. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. She's fabulous. And so I took the, um, the word Art Heaven from a magazine. And then this part right here is off of some packaging. Right, so it's a coloring page, magazine image, magazine image, some fabric right there, fibers that y'all can hardly see on screen, but it's on the card. Um, that's pretty. So that's my finished ATC. All right, so here's my clusters. I don't know how many clusters I made, but here's one. Oh, wow. A little bit of vintage, that's two. I'm curious wow. how many I made. I love making it three. <laughs> Or this one just says creative. How simple is that? And then I have the word I am on a little scrap that came from packaging. It says I am creative. I, uh, all right. And this one says the most authentic objects are those purchased straight from the source, from small market stalls, artisans, and micro businesses. I agree with that. That's why I took it out. I already lost count. Y'all have to count for me. So this is five. All right. I'm at five. Six. And then this one says, not responsible for accidents. All swimmers must wear swimsuits. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too funny. That's, that's uh, what was that? Six? See, this is how seven. I, have my I think it's seven. Okay. Wait, one, two, three. Oh, no, it's six. I'm on seven now. So this is seven. It doesn't say anything. It's just cute together. It's nice on the side of a page somewhere. Eight is on your way, and it's got a little bird there in a plane. No real purpose for this one. I just think it's cute. <laughs> Nine says, be fabulous, believe it. That's a good one. This one says, chasing dreams. So that's 10. And those are um, voting flags. This just Alrighty. says, five, four. <laughs> I just did a color thing on this. I already lost count. <laughs> um, we're lovers of wine, gourmet food, and great taste. And this one is home is where, and then it doesn't say. It's just a bunch of yarn. <laughs> I like that anchor on there. Thank you. That came from a bag. You can see the little bend in the bag right here. It's a piece I couldn't use in the bag. Oh, wow. Bag became a journal. This says, thanks for being my hero. Oh, <laughs> this is just a messy tag. And there was already a Brad in it. And that's washi tape. And it says work of oh, art. That's pretty. Hidden little butterfly. Oh, that's cool. A little bird in the back of a truck says worth the trip. And then it says all kinds <laughs> of amazing and the other thing. <laughs> I, I did just see somebody getting scared of a big bird inside a truck going, what, what happened? <laughs> Right? It makes me think of those parades where they have the big floats or something. Yeah. Uh, it says sensuous or strong. Both, please. <laughs> <laughs> and then I took at it, instead of seeing the word sensational, it says sensa, like sensei. And I was, you know, tried to cover it to make it look like an E, but... That picture looks funny. <laughs> it does. Um, <laughs> this one is a little green truck but i i stapled presents in the back of it Ooh. i don't really make my clusters too chunky because i like them to flay, lay flat in the journals and so that's why it's only a few pieces this one to me even though it's two shirts do you or do you not see like a frankenstein face that needs to be doodled right here you know and that like that's the the little cork or ear thing that pops uh -huh. out of the side yeah so that's probably what's going to end up here oh yeah yeah this says live in my dream and it's completely messy. That's what I liked about it. <laughs> it's like, oh, scraps. And this one just says, Yay me, fabulous. And then it's it's Chinese lunch <laughs> or Chinese dinner. Uh, uh, this says one of a kind. You use that and, word all the time, don't you? What? Fabulous? I I do use you, the word. I, yeah, you use fabulous all the time. All the time. <laughs> Um, this is just a messy bow with no words. You just didn't need words. This actually, um, oh, you can't see it, but it was a paper clip 
but whoever drew the paperclip put the flower on the wrong side of the paperclip so it wouldn't have worked anyway. And uh -oh. this is just something simple that says so sweet. Uh -oh. This one I just love because I love the roller skates. And and then it oh, says those stay are so happy. cool. They are it is so cool. Um this one is just a soda pop or you know, we'll just call it pink lemonade or something. Mm, no real purpose yummy. on this one, just a simple page. And my last one, <laughs> you know, it just says the people. And it's a <laughs> <laughs> this is my least favorite of the whole stack because it feels like it's really missing something, but it's gonna hang just the way it is. And so yep, yeah, that's the whole shenanigans. <laughs> and this is my shenanigans. Favorite. Yeah. This is my uh, scrap box for when I make clusters and I still have lots to play. So I, I like that. Um, and oh, so, wow. Yeah. That's so cool. It is. And, and so when I'm done making a craft, all my leftover bits get sorted into this scrap box. And if they're too big to fit, then it doesn't go in my cluster box. But yeah, I've been, I don't make clusters as much as I would like to. I probably should leave a glue stick in here. I don't make clusters as much as I would like to. But I love making them because, you know, it's just kind of freeing to just do nothing but a stapler and some supplies, you know. But yeah. Yeah. Well, I need to start. <clears throat> I need to start making clusters, too. And I, I never made them, but I would love to try and make some. They are fun. They are so much fun to, to make because... You don't get so worried about it, you know? You just enjoy the process of making it. Here, anything I don't love, let's just put some some messy stuff around it, and I'm going to love it more. See, now I like it better already. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is better already. All oh, right. I like that. That's pretty. Oh. So that was a lot of fun. I'm going to go ahead and log off because I've got a bunch of things I need to get done today. It was fun hanging out with you, Clint, and everyone that's over in the chat with us. So anytime, whenever you want me, just whenever you want me back on, just let me know, and I'll be happy to join you again. Sounds like fun. And if anybody else sees, you know, that they want to do some craft and play, we could do that every once in a while. We'll just schedule some in. And so hopefully everyone has a fabulous day. I agree. Lois, everyone have a wonderful day. Love and hugs, everyone. Take care. Bye, y'all. Peace. Love you all. God bless.